I'm going to talk to you about how to build a professional website form guide. Having user-friendly forms is important on your website for several important reasons, because frustrating forms are notorious for causing abandonment. So easy to use forms make it more likely for users to complete them, where, whether it's subscribing to your newsletter or signing up for a service or making a purchase. We'll also go over Gravity Forms, a really popular form builder that you can use on your WordPress website. So without further ado, let's get started. A good form on a website is like a helpful friend. It'll guide you smoothly through the process without causing any frustration. Here are some key things that you need to consider whenever you are creating a form that is user-friendly and effective. First thing you want to make sure is that clarity is king. Think about the purpose of your form. Make the form's goal crystal clear from the start. What information are you collecting and why? Use clear and concise labels for each field, avoiding jargon or technical terms, and provide instructions. Um, if needed, provide brief instructions or examples of what users should be putting in each field um, next to each field. Keep the form short and sweet as possible. Um, only ask for information that you absolutely need. More fields equals more work for the user, and it potentially leads abandonment. Um, what you can also do is something called conditional logic. Um, so you can show or hide fields based on previous answer. This keeps the form more relevant and reduces any kind of unnecessary steps. You want to make sure that the form is very usable. Um, and by that, I mean, consider things like mobile friendliness. Ensure that the form adapts seamlessly to different screen sizes and devices. Use appropriate input fields, so like text fields, date pickers, drop down menus. You want to pick fields that are based on the information that you're collecting. Um, so for example, if you are wanting to collect a uh, date of birth, you want to make sure you use a date picker and not like a normal text field. It makes it easier for people to ch pick their uh, date instead of having to type it in and things like that. And you also want to make sure that your form can be validated properly. So you want to provide instant feedback on errors and guide users to correct input before submission. You also want to consider design and accessibility. Maintain a clean and consistent design that aligns with your website branding. Ensure that the form is accessible to users with disabilities, so follow all the WCAG guidelines. And for longer forms, show users their progress to avoid feeling overwhelmed. Fill the forms with available information like their name or their email. This will help save time. And if you can, also you want to make sure you show a confirmation message thanking users for their submission so users know for sure that their form has been submitted correctly. You can either just show a simple message after they hit submit or even redirect to a thank you page with more information. And always, always test and iterate your forms. Gather user feedback and regularly test your forms to identify and fix any pain points. By following these principles, you can create forms that are user-friendly, efficient, and achieve your desired outcomes. Remember that a good form is silent, but a powerful ally in your website's success. Easier website builders uh, forms for WordPress that, that's out there. Gravity Forms is a really popular premium plugin for WordPress and it's aimed at enhancing form creation and management. It's known for its user-friendly interface, powerful features and flexibility, making it a really popular choice for businesses and individuals to intuitively create forms without coding knowledge. Um, lots of like payment integrations, multi-page forms, um, features like form notifications, wide range of field types and things like that. It is a premium plugin, so it does require a paid license and there might be some add-on costs for additional functionality, but overall Gravity Forms is a really strong contender for anyone seeking a robust and user-friendly solution uh, for, for their forms on their Word, WordPress website. Its extensive features, flexibility, and positive user experience make it a really viable investment for businesses and individuals alike. So let's get into how it works and build a simple form with Gravity Forms. So what you want to do is navigate to the back end of your website and under forms, you just want to click on the form tab and then you'll see the form dashboard and it'll have a list of all the forms that you have currently on your website. And what you want to do to add a new one, you just click add new and you want to give it a form title. So for example, let's call this one contact us. And you can give it a form description as well to kind of for back end use only so that you can see what the form is um, supposed to be about, what data is supposed to collect, things like that. And then just click create form. And here you'll see sort of a blank version of the form. And on the right hand side is what you'll, is essentially the Gravity Forms Builder. And it's what you'll use to add in different form fields and create the different settings for it. So the uh, fields are separated into standard fields, advanced post fields and pricing fields. Standard fields are just your normal sort of line text, paragraph, any drop downs, things like that. Then you have advanced fields. So these are pre-formatted fields, things like email and name and date field. 
um, time and recapture and things like that. You also have post fields. So these will take um, dynamic data from the page that it's currently on and display it front end. And then you have sort of pricing fields. And these work well with um, basically if you wanted to have a product listing and have uh, people sort of select products from there, you can. Um, and the fields are sort of shown here. And then on the right side, you'll see field settings. And this is whenever you select a certain field, it'll show you the different settings that you have. So to go through some of the set, uh, fields, you have the sort of standard fields. And these are things like single line text. So this is just a single line text field um, for you to, for users to sort of add in a sentence or a word, um, depending on what the question is. Um, each field, uh, each field settings, they are split into general, appearance, advanced, and conditional logic. So under general, um, all of them will have a sort of option for field label and a description, and the field label being just this bold label here. And it's up to you um, what you want that label to be. You can also give it a description. Um, and this is basically where you would, you can write sort of instructions on what you want um, people to fill in the field and below. Um, and this is uh, optional if you want to have a field for description, if you want to have a description sort of just describe what the field is for, or you can leave it blank. Um, it's up to you. Um, you can give uh, the text field sort of maximum characters. So if you want to have a limit on how much they can write in the field, you can. Um, each each um, field that you have has a rules option and it gives you the option if you want to have a required field or if you want to have new duplicates. So if a field is marked as required, it means that they can't submit the field. Um, they can't submit the form if this field is blank. They have to have a value in there. And no duplicates means that it'll sort of compare what they've written in this in the field and compare it to the database. If there's a value that already equals that in the database, then it won't accept that and you'll have to write something different. This is good if you want to um, make sure that the emails aren't being saved in twice. You can make a email a no duplicate field. That way the same email isn't getting stored in your database twice. In the appearance tab, so each field has um, a placeholder um, field, uh, option. So placeholder being an example sort of of what they can add in the field. So in the name one, I can write John and that kind of gives people an uh, indication of what type of things they should be adding in the field. You can, um, all they all have a field label visibility. So all the fields have that field label visibility and you can control if you want it hidden or if you want the field label um, aligned to the top. And then the description placement, it's up to you if you want to have below input well, as it currently is, or if you have a, if you want it above the input, yeah, um, all the fields have that kind of control. And then you can have each field can have a custom validation message, meaning if the field has an error and this and they can't submit the form, it'll show a custom message for specifically for the field, so they know exactly where it's going wrong. And then for each field, you can add a custom class, and um, that way you can add more styling to a specific field if you want. And you can also control the field size. So if you click small, it'll change the width to a small. You also have the option for medium and large. So these are the field settings and they're generally the same for all of the fields that you have. In terms of style and layout, what you can do if you wanted to have, for example, a two column layout, if you wanted to add another single line text here, if I put, click and drag that over beside the existing field, I can make another field beside it and I automatically have a uh, two column layout. I can do do the same again for three columns. And I can just drag and drop that and then just have another one at the bottom. So the layout of each field is um, is good as uh, pretty easy to control. Um, another thing with field settings, so that's the general and appearance. Um, another thing you can do is something called conditional logic. So with conditional logic, you can control which fields um, can be shown depending on the value of another field. So for example, if we wanted to give users the option of us either emailing them or f uh, contacting them, we can have one field that says, um, oh yeah, we can have a radio button option that says, um, would you prefer for us to 
contact you via email or phone and then you can add the two choices one for email and one for phone and then if we were to add a email field we can control that so that it only shows if someone were to select email so if we click on settings and then go into conditional logic and click enable conditional logic um, we would choose the condition so show this field if all of the uh, all of the following match so that's the rule and we want to click the field so would you prefer for us to contact you via email or phone um, is and then you want to select the choice so what this rule means is show this field show the email field if the following match and the following being would you prefer us to contact you via email or phone and that's if that is selected as email so now this will only show if they select uh, email as a choice. Same thing if we were to add the, fo the phone field. And click on settings, we can give that conditional logic. And instead, and make sure that the same rule applies. But instead of email, we choose phone. And now the same rule applies to that one. If would you prefer for us to contact you by email or phone and phone is selected, then the phone one will show and not email. Um, and it just helps reduce the overall questions on the page and it improves sort of user um, experience so that they're not overloaded with a bunch of questions that they don't um, need to answer. Um, so that's the checkbox. Another option you can have is the drop down, and this is just another way to give users options. Um, it's the same as sort of radio boxes, radio buttons, except with radio buttons, you can see all the choices and with drop, uh, drop downs, you would need to select the drop down and then select the option. So if we were to go um, into general, you can see all the options here. Uh, first choice, second choice, third choice, we can bulk add choices. So if we click that, um, you can see we have already um, different options for, for example, if we do countries and if you wanted to add that, it'll be all bulk added for you um, I would say to use if you're trying to figure out if you want to if you want people if you want to use the radio buttons or drop downs if you have loads lots of options for your users to choose from so for example countries um, then I would use drop down so that not so that the user isn't overloaded with a bunch of options if you only have two maybe three different options for you to choose from then it's fine to use radio buttons because um, then it won't take up loads of uh, a lot of the pages um, another option that you have then is checkboxes and the main difference between checkboxes and uh, radio buttons and drop downs is that with radio buttons um, yeah radio buttons you can only choose one option same with drop down you can only choose one option but with checkboxes you can choose multiple options so people can go in and click second and third if they want to um, with the multiple options you can you again have the bulk add predefined choices and you can um, add go through and see um, if any of these apply and you can just insert those choices there um, you can also enable se select all as a choice so if you have one that has um, if you have a drop down that or a multi checkbox option that allows a select all options you can add that as an option and then again you can have a required field and all of that Another thing you can do is add a section. So this um, adds a sort of section break and gives allows you to separate things into headings if it's a particularly big form. Um, the section break field allows you to add a content separator to your form to help organize your groups of field. It's more of a visual element rather than actual data collecting form field. Um, and within that, you can give the field enable a break. So the first one, um, you might have a section for the first section um, and this can be uh, called about yourself and if the next set of questions is about the person's company for example you can have that as a heading and it kind of breaks up the form a little bit and makes it easier for your users to kind of fill it out um, Another one is you can break it off into pages as well. 
and give it a page break. So a page break um, allows the creation of multi-page forms. Um, that way, instead of seeing all the questions all in one page, what it'll do is show the first page and it'll just be a bunch of, a bunch of questions. Then they can click next and it'll show the next set of questions and then they click next and it'll be a next set of questions. So this is good for if you have a really big form that's collecting a lot of information. Instead of showing all of the information and data all at once, it'll just it'll um, add the forms on different pages and it makes it less overwhelming for the users. So adding a page field, it will automatically add three new markers to your form. So start paging at the top of your form, a page break marker. Um, and this is where we dragged the form to. And then you have end of the paging and that's at the bottom of the form. Um, the start paging will always appear at the top of your form and it's used to specify our general options that define the behavior of your multi-page form. Um, so if we go into the start page, um, you can have a progress integrator. So this is how people know how far they're it's a visual sort of progress indicator to, that you can display if you want to. So you can have it in terms of, in terms of a bar, you can have it in steps, or you can just have none. Um, and then with a the style, um, it just gives you um, color options. Um, we can also choose custom and give it a sort of custom text color and background color. And you can give different page names as well. So it's up to you how you want to sort of separate your fields out. Um, for a simple contact field form, if you're just collecting their name, email address, phone number, and a little paragraph, um, then the multi-form step wouldn't be needed. It's just for bigger forms um, where you're collecting lots of information. Another useful form you can, uh, field you can do is the file upload. And with the file upload, um, you can ask users to upload their own files. For example, if this is a form for a job application and you want users to upload their CV, you would choose a file upload. And within that, you have you can put restrictions on what kind of files to, uh, to upload. So for example, um, allowed file extensions, you can say um, only say docx, um, or you can just have PDFs and that way people can't upload any images or any video files or anything like that. They can only... Um, upload files with these extensions. Um, you can enable multi-file upload. So if you know there's going to be multiple multiple files, um, you can enable that. Or if you switch that off, they can only uh, upload one file. You can give it a maximum file size. Um, so um, just to have more control over how big the files are, you can give it a fi file size as well. Um, so this field is good for if you want people to upload a, f a CV or like a job application or anything like that. If you want users to provide a file or an image and things like that. Um, another thing that you might want to add is reCAPTCHA. So this is just a simple reCAPTCHA form and it's used to kind of um, as a version of anti-spam to make sure you don't get any spam comments. To do that, you need to make sure that you have a API key uh, set for your site. And then once you have your API key, um, you would just add that in the recapture settings. So if I click on recapture settings, it'll take me to the setting and it'll ask me to add the site key, secret key, and the type of um, API it is. And that's a wrap for today's video on Gravity Forms and professional website forms in general.